All right, multiple bonds. So I want to start with the initial example here is going to be molecule ethylene. So that is C2H4. And it has this Lewis structure. Two carbons double bonded to each other. And each of them also having a, a two single bonded hydrogens as well. So everything here, this is actually a really, you know, this is as good as Lewis structures get. There's no formal charge. Everything is octet or duet happy in the case of the hydrogens. So now let's talk about this in terms of valence bond theory and hybridization. So what is the hybridization on that carbon? Well, you've got three electron domains. So you would say, I hope, sp2. Now, from a valence bond theory, it actually, so we say it looks like this. And now I've actually drawn here the various hybrids. So here we've got the three sp2 hybrids on, we'll call this carbon one, and the three sp2 hybrids on carbon two. The single bonds are made by overlap of a hydrogen 1s. Okay, well, so let's talk about so this overlap here is what's keeping the hydrogens together. And so carbon-carbon bond here is formed by the overlap of an sp state from one car, an sp2 state or electron from one carbon and an sp2 electron on the other carbon. But that's only one of the double bonds. Now the carbon-hydrogen bonds, which are single bonds, are again our 1s or hydrogen 1s and carbon sp2 overlap. But again, this is only one of the bonds and there's there's two of them here. So how do we do that? Well, I've rotated this on its side a little bit. So that's why it looks kind of skewed. But remember from the last video, we talked about cases where you had unhybridized states left. Whenever you have sp2 hybrids, there is one remaining unhybridized p state that could be accessible. And it turns out that those p states are the ones that are oriented perpendicular to the plane that is defined by the sp2 hybrids, that trigonal planar plane. So if the sp2 hybrids here are coming in and out of the screen, so they're like parallel to the floor, the unused p states are the ones that are in the plane of the screen going up and down and they can overlap so if you actually smush them if you bring the bonds close enough and smush them together you've got overlap here and you've got overlap here that's a bond now this is um i and others call this side on overlap and as far as bonding goes, the physical overlap is not as much, which means that it doesn't result in quite as strong a bond, but the same, you know, same order of magnitude for sure. Um, but the important thing is that in this case, orientation matters. That for these to overlap, they have to be lined up with each other. They both have to be in the plane of your screen right now. And so if either atom is rotated a little bit, those, and you have to imagine me having my fingers right next to each other and then moving one hand 90 degrees, uh, that if you do that, then the overlap isn't there anymore and you miss that bond. So this particular bond and bonds like it actually stop the molecule from rotating around the bond axis. and for single bonds, the rotation around a bond axis can actually be quite free. And in this case, this once this bond is made, it sort of locks everything into place because if there's any rotation around that bond axis, you lose that overlap, you lose the bond, 
that takes energy to happen. All right, so now um, I'm going to point out a, a fundamental difference between the two bonds um, that make up that carbon-carbon double bond. So the first one that we described, we described it something like this. And it was you know, overlap of an SP state on one carbon and an SP state on the other. And we kind of classify these bonds, one way that we describe them is sort of what, we, what they look like down the bond axis, what kind of symmetry is there. All right, so if you look down that carbon-carbon bond, you would see, so imagine just spinning this, um, you know, in the plane parallel to your, to your desk so that this is now right in front of everything. You would see something like this. All of these states are circularly symmetric around the bond axis. This dot here represents this blue part right here, and this here is, you know, the red part right there. And the important thing is that it's completely symmetric around the axis. No matter what angle that you go out from the axis at, you see the same thing. And so there's no parts where this is zero, there's no nodes or anything like that. And we call this a sigma bond. Where does that come from? Well, what does this look like? Hopefully, you know, what, what of the original electron states does that remind you of? Well, hopefully it reminds you of an S orbital, you know, the circle sphere one. And so this looks like an S state and sigma is just the Greek analog to the Latin letter S. Now, so let's talk about, what about the other bonds? I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna mess up the picture here. Remember that those other bonds came from the unhybridized P states that were perpendicular to the SP2 triangle plane. And that's gonna look like, you know, so let so me color it in here. So we have one here, we have one here, and blue part on the bottom, red part on the top. What does that remind you of? Well, if you do the same thing, spin it on the bond axis, you get this picture right here, which should remind you of, and the other thing to note is that there is a nodal plane there. So this bond does not have electron density that is symmetric around the center. So if you go out here, you see none. If you go at this angle, you see quite a bit. Um, so this is not a sigma type, and you can, I don't know if you can guess what the name we give to this. Um, this looks like a P orbital. So bonds like this are referred to as pi bonds. All right, um, and those are the two types, sigma and pi, that we talk about in this class. So I want to give you a picture of, you know, what the entire bonding scheme of ethylene looks like. So brace yourself. It looks like this. So we've got the sp2, sp2, sigma bond being the first of the two. And then this pi type interaction between the unhybridized p states um, gives us this pi bond right here. And now keep in mind that the electron density is not as quite as distinct as it makes it look here, it's just kind of all one big blob. But the important thing is that, so here you can see why orientation is key. That these aren't lined up right on, you know, lined up, you know, perfectly in the plane of the screen, this overlap doesn't happen. Um, and then, which has the result of making the entire molecule completely planar. So these, remember these three bonds, one, two, three, are all in the same plane. And these three, one, two, three, are in the same plane, and they're in the same plane together. So all six atoms are in the same plane. Molecule is quite flat. How do we get triple bonds? All right, and the other thing is, don't forget, because of that, 
Um, normally, if this was a, the sigma bond, you could rotate around this bond and the bond itself wouldn't really be affected by it, but the pi type bond would be. So there's no rotation around this bond once that second one is made. All right, triple bonds. So this is acetylene, C2H2. So this actually is the full Lewis structure for it. Um, we've got two electron domains around each carbon, so it's going to be linear. So how is that made? So remember, two electron domains requires sp hybridization. So the first of these three bonds is sp-sp overlap. That's going to be a sigma type bond. And if you make an sp hybrid, you have used one of the p states, which means you've got two of them remaining for pi type bonding. And that's exactly what happens. So these two regions of electron density form, we'll call this bond number two. And these two, the up and down ones, we'll say forms bonds, uh, bond number three. So bond one, bond two, bond three. And so you'll note that in this case, in the one before, of the multiple bonds, the first one was a sigma type bond, and all of the ones after that are pi type bonds, and that's a thing. Um, so those two pi type bonds are formed from unhybridized 2p electrons. And for multiple bonds, that's the way it works out. Um, one, is, one is going to be a sigma type bond. The remaining bonds are always going to be pi type bonds that are made from the unhybridized atoms. All right, that's it. And as I promised, the intro song. So the song was Points of Authority by Linkin Park. And the song is from the the tie-in is actually not the song title, but the album, which is their 2000 masterpiece hybrid theory. All right, see you next time.